Hello, I'm Sarah from South London Sling Library. Today I'd like to talk to you about using the close kaboo with your newborn baby. When you get your kaboo, it's nicely packaged in its own little bag. If you just pull it out, what you want to do is make sure that you don't put this down somewhere and forget about it. Technically, this little bag is inside out, and so if you turn it the right way round, what you've actually got is the second section of your sling. So just pop that to one side because you're going to need it in a little while. So when you unroll your kaboo, it will already be nicely threaded. They do all of the work for you. If you've been gifted a kaboo and somebody's very kindly washed it for you and hasn't re-threaded it, I'll um, link below to a video where you can um, see how to re-thread your kaboo. It's really easy, really, really easy. So don't panic about that. When it is re-threaded, all you're going to do is this uh, cross section that's got the logo on, you're going to hold that in front of you so that you can read it. And I've just put my arms up through the middle, hold the logo so that I can read it. And what you find then is that up here you've got a head hole and at the sides you've got arm holes. So it's just literally going to go on like a t-shirt. I can put my arms in and then find my head hole put my head in. Now I want to just make sure that this section at the back isn't all the way up here. What happens is particularly as your baby gets bigger if you wear your cross section up here you'll find you're just hanging all of your baby's weight from the back of your neck and that's not going to be comfortable. So I want to, to find my rings here, get hold of this section and just pull downwards. Sometimes it can help to kind of take the fabric here and push backwards. That can help make it really easy to bring that section down. And then when I put my hands in the carrier, so a bit like a yoga pose, and push out, it's got a nice amount of stretch. It's not too much, but it's a nice amount of stretch. That actually, for me, is more than enough space to put my newborn in. I have a relatively small um, newborn size demo doll and that's more than enough space just for Jamie's bottom. Um, if you have a smaller baby, you might need your carrier a little bit tighter. If you're carrying a bigger baby, um, you might need to just loosen your rings. To loosen and tighten, these work very much like a 1980s belt. So you can just get hold of this bit at the, the front, hold your fabric, lift that ring and pull and it will loosen. To tighten, you just take hold of the tail and you pull and you've got exactly the same system on both sides. So this is enough space for me to put Jamie, my little newborn demo doll, in. It's worth noting at this stage that one of these straps will run closer to your body than the other. It really doesn't matter which strap you put the baby into first. It honestly doesn't matter, but it's worth noting which is the one that is closest to your body. So for me, it's the one on my right shoulder because when I go to spread the fabric out, this is the one that I want to start with. If I, so I just show you, if I spread this fabric out first, I then can't get to this one. So I want to spread this fabric out first so then I can spread this one over the top but it doesn't matter which side the baby goes into first. So I've got my carrier on, it's nice and low behind me, now I need my baby. So Jamie, my newborn size demo doll, is gonna help us out today. All I'm gonna do is pop Jamie nice and high on my shoulder, kind of like burp position. I can then put my hand in the fabric on the opposite shoulder, stretch it down, and just take one of Jamie's feet through like that. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to lower Jamie diagonally into the fabric or anything like that. I'm just going to take the foot through. Then I can put a hand on Jamie's bottom, a hand on Jamie's head, and I'm just going to switch shoulders. There we go. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. So put my hand through the fabric nice and high up on my shoulder, stretch it down and take it around one foot. So Jamie has a foot here and a foot here. Then all I'm gonna do is center Jamie on my body. And what happens 
is this fabric goes into Jamie's knees, the back of Jamie's knees, and Jamie's bottom hangs right down over the front of that fabric. And I'm sure if your baby's already arrived, you'll have seen your baby make this position already. It's the knees up, bum down. It's often known as the frog leg position. It's just a position that newborn babies like to be in. So all we're doing is supporting the baby in a position they want to be in, but hopefully allowing you to be hands-free. We're not hands-free just yet. This is a demo doll, that's why I can do that. Don't let go of your baby. So encouraging Jamie to adopt the position that they automatically, naturally, naturally like to be in. They've got the knees up, their bottom down, hands up here near their faces, generally where newborns want them then I'm just going to take the edge of this fabric and it's got a nice seam on it so it's easy to find. I'm just gonna take the edge of this fabric and I'm gonna pull it around Jamie so that it goes all the way from the back of one knee into the back of the other knee. Sometimes it's handy to put your hand under that second strap to pull the fabric round. And it goes almost shoulder to shoulder as well. If you focus on trying to get your baby's bottom into the middle of the width of the fabric, then it will automatically come nice and high up their back. If I show you, if I open that, take the edge of this fabric and just bring it into the back of Jamie's knee, you can see it doesn't come quite as high up their back. If I concentrate on trying to get Jamie's bottom into the middle of the whole width of the fabric, so I'll pull more of it across so that Jamie's bottom is in the middle, it automatically goes nice and high up their back. Then I'm going to do exactly the same with the other strap. So get Jamie's bottom into the middle of the width of the fabric, make sure it goes from one knee into the back of the other knee and almost shoulder to shoulder. That's lovely. Now I need the second piece that was the bag. So here it is. It has a little uh, fold out headrest at the top so you know which way is up. What they want you to do is put this section on so that that headrest just cups the bottom of the baby's head. Um, it goes round to under their bottom and then you can gather it up behind you and tie a double knot. I find it quite hard to tie a knot up here. I could do it, but actually it hurts my shoulders, elbows and wrists. Not great for me. So I cheat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bunch that fabric up, pop it under Jamie's bottom run it round the back of Jamie's knees behind me and I can tie a double knot just a little bit lower, just makes it a little bit more comfortable. So nice, snug, double knot, like so. And then I can pop my thumbs in the top edge of this fabric and pull it up. Pull it up over Jamie's body and then I can use my fingertips just to push it up around my body so that it's not pulling downwards. Okay, so now we need to go through our ticks safety guidelines. The ticks guidelines are exactly the same in this carrier as they are in every other sling or baby carrier. So the word to remember is ticks. You want to be able to tick all of your safety boxes. The T stands for tight. The baby should be as tightly held against you as if you were holding them in your arms. So you should be able to pop a hand on your baby's head, do a little dip forward and not feel their body weight pull away from you. The I stands for in view. Now you can see that this is a very common thing that happens. You're, you're doing really well at pulling the fabric foot really nice and far across your baby's body so that they're well supported from knee to knee and shoulder to shoulder but as a result, their face gets covered. So to be able to um, monitor Jamie's airways and make sure their airways are open and they're breathing at all times, I need to be able to see Jamie's face. So I'm just gonna take this edge, which is the edge that's covering Jamie's face. If I pull this seatbelt layer down, you may be able to see. I'm gonna hold it near the nape of Jamie's neck because I still want Jamie to be supported up to the nape of their neck. I'm just gonna take this edge and I'm gonna pull it out over my shoulder so that it caps my shoulder, a bit like a capped sleeve on a t-shirt. So it just caps my shoulder and then makes a straight line between the top of my arm there and the nape of Jamie's neck. I can then put this layer back up. There we go. 
So the eye is in view. So I've opened this area out in front of Jamie's face so I can see Jamie's face really very clearly. And this is about what you as the carrying adult can see, not what people coming towards me can see. With this headrest up, if you're walking towards me, you can't see Jamie's face. But when I look down, I can see Jamie's face very, very clearly. The C from the word ticks is close enough to kiss. So you want baby's head up here on the flat part of your chest. If you've got breasts, baby should be above your breast tissue, night on the nice firm part of your chest. The K stands for keeping baby's chin off baby's chest. The easiest way to tell that baby's chin is off their chest is to do the ugly double chin manoeuvre and make sure that you can see the baby's nose, eyes and forehead. As long as you can see from their nose up the top half of their face, their chin is off their chest. The S stands for supported spine. So if you put a hand on your baby's back and lightly press, they don't have extra room to get closer to you, uncurl or sit up. And this really is about not allowing them extra space in the sling that they could slump into, put their chin on the chest and close their airway. To get Jamie out, I have options. I can either undo this section or if I know that I'm going to take Jamie out for a nappy change um, or for a feed and then they're going back into the carrier because we need to leave the house, whatever it is that's happening, I know that I'm going to keep my carrier on and put Jamie back in in a moment, then I can just lower that. I can just lower it to under Jamie's bottom. As Jamie's feet get, uh, legs get longer, I can release Jamie's feet like so. Whatever works for you. And then all I'm going to do is start to open these cross sections. As I do so, I'm removing support from the sling. So I'm going to start to support Jamie where I'm removing the support from the sling. And then again, I can just tuck it under Jamie's bottom like so. And then I can put my hands around Jamie's torso, support the back of their head. I can either lift up onto my shoulder and then release Jamie's feet or I can lift straight up. That's the Lion King manoeuvre and you get extra points if you can sing the song. <laughs> so in that way, you can leave your carrier on and then just pop your baby back in as you need to. So it can be a really handy way to kind of carry on wearing your carrier, um, particularly if your baby is, is, you know, needs to be held a lot, but also you need to take them out to do things. Um, it can be really handy just to keep wearing the carrier and pop them back in when you need to. Um, I hope that helps. If you'd like to uh, either have a consultation, baby wearing or a reflux consultation, or if you would like to hire a sling or a carrier, you can find all of the information at the, on the website at southlondonslings.co.uk. Thanks a lot. Bye.